Culture over culture, you're welcome indeed to another edition of the programme. Now, don't forget later on, we're crossing over once again to Manchester to join Martin Logan, who's out and about with the Irish community right across the UK. This week, we're in the capital for one of the biggest Mayo nights of the year. The Mayo Association in Dublin, they present their annual U Tree Ball here in the Ballsbridge Hotel in the city. And there'll be a number of presentations. We'll be meeting some of the winners of the Mehel Mayo Award this year, and also the Mayo Person of the Year Award and the Young Person of the Year. And we'll be meeting guests that are attending the event as well. So it's going to be a great night for Mayo people here in the capital. Preparation starts, I suppose, in the middle of summer for uh, the Mayo Person of the Year Awards. It's it's a huge, prestigious award. Uh, I think there's only somewhere in the region 50 people that have received it down the years. We're still going, but as you say, a lot of work goes into it every year. Now, I'm getting a little bit old for this now, Henry, but uh, I'm sure that somebody else will be uh, going with it. And uh, there are an absolutely fa fabulous con committee here in Dublin, well committed uh, to the event and it is the premier person of the year award and we're delighted to be carrying that every year as as the the premier award because other count, other county associations are struggling all over the place and um, is, we're not without our struggles but we put our heart and soul into it and it turns out to be a good night now the kind of preparations for tonight what can people look forward to we know well we have the awards uh, we have the the Ballsbridge hotel in in great shape. It's all red and green. We have uh, 500 people here, close on 500 people here, um, and then you have the winners who make the night. Uh, it's their night, it's Martina Jennings' night, it's uh, the cyclist night, and it's the young person of the year. And uh, those are the people that really we must uh, honour tonight, and that's important for them, and it's important for us that we we don't lose our identity, because they, these are the people that was picked by an independent panel of judges uh, so people had to submit them everything had to be done we had to follow through and you're correct these things just don't happen we remember we all have jobs and we're all working and uh, we try to put it, uh, a good face on it and try to keep it all together you know there's a buzz about the place as you have already got upstairs and over there in the in the, and beside the bar there's a lot of movement going on a lot of people but it's it's important that we keep this for us here in Dublin we keep our identity you know and that's really important for us. Martina, congratulations on Mayo Person of the Year 2020. How are you feeling? Oh, look, at, I, I suppose it was a huge shock to get the call first to say that I had been chosen as the Mayo Person of the Year 2020. It's something that I look at every year to wonder who's been chosen. I think they never get it wrong. So and anything I've ever done has never been for an award. It's been because it was the right thing to do. But to be recognised for it then is just, and from your own people in your own county that I'm so proud of and so proud to be for from Mayo is just it's incredible and it's a surreal feeling but it's a it's a it's a lovely feeling and it's it's a lovely night for my family and friends and everybody from Mayo's Common Hospice to share with because they're the people that allow me do what I do and I couldn't do it without any of them so it's it's a great evening and Mayo's Common Hospital there's been a lot happening there over the last couple of months which you're excited about and yeah. the light has come to fruition yes after three years we now have our hospice in Mayo. It's finished with no bank loan and it came in under budget and is due to be open this year. And we're so proud of it. We are so proud of this building because it truly is a home from home. It's a world-class facility. It genuinely is. And from the minute patients and families come in that front door, they will feel like they're home and they will receive dignity and respect on every part of their journey. And we're so proud to be able to bring that to the county of Mayo, to the Mayo people, Roscommon people and people beyond. 
and now we're heading straight into our Roscommon Hospice. We turned the sod in January and we are on site at the end of February and that's a 14 month bill so we will be delivering that to the people of Roscommon next year and I'm really proud of that because I, we, there was no way we could have ever started Mayo without having plans for Roscommon in the background because the Roscommon people got behind us and now the Mayo people are getting behind the Roscommon people so it, it's a great story but it's what Mayo Roscommon Hospice is about and it's what the people of Mayo are about. It's about looking after your own and it's about making sure they have dignity and respect on that really vital important journey. Well congratulations once again Martina. Thank you so much Henry. Cahirna, this is a great night for Mayo people in the capital tonight. It's fantastic to be here and to celebrate the success of our, all our winners, Henry. It's a fantastic, and particularly for the people right across the country, but as you said, the people from Dublin also. Yeah, and the association here, it's a very strong association. They get involved in lots of things here, but this is their big night here, uh, acknowledging people have done outstanding work in the community back home. Absolutely, Henry. As you said yourself, they're involved in so many things through the year. They're involved with things that we don't know about ourselves. Behind the scenes, they're helping people from Mayo and from other counties who might have fallen on hard times and they're helping them in day in, day out. So look, it's great that they have a fantastic organisation, which they have, and you can see here tonight, the crowd is here, and we're all looking forward to a great night, and it's an honour to these people, and particularly to the award winners, and I want to congratulate each and every one of them. Yeah. Uh, and of course, another part of the association is that they chose a, a charity partner, and I know you have great interest in this particular area, because Western Care are the beneficiaries uh, tonight of the raffle. Yes, well, I have a double interest in this. I have a brother, Patrick, who has Down syndrome, Henry, as you know, and I also work my daily job as working with Western Care, so I'm delighted that Western Care has been chosen as their partner. Western Care, of course, do fantastic work right across the county of Mayo, and it's great to see that the Mayo Association in Dublin has found it within their courage to say this is a great organisation and we support them. Cahill, congratulations on receiving the Young Mayo Person of the Year Award tonight. Thank you, Henry. I'm delighted. I, I can't believe it. It's such an honour and a privilege to win such a prestigious award. I just, I can't believe it. It's, it's um, just a dream come true. And you actually sang for the audience tonight. I sang three songs, um, three songs that, one of my three favourite songs actually, and three songs that are really sentimental to me. And um, yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed it. Why were you nominated for this award? Um, I suppose I released an album at the age of 13, and um, to my surprise, Prize. Three months later, we raised twenty-one thousand euros for Foxford District Alzheimer's, which was a shock to all of us because we didn't really think the CD would become much. It was just a little thing for the family, to be honest. And um, then after that, I did loads of different concerts around the country. For example, breast ca breast cancer awareness, um, motion neuron disease in Dublin. I also did the Operation Smile Ireland, which I love so much because it was um, to raise much needed funds for children in third world countries who have facial deformities and cleft palates. So I really loved working with. Them. Yeah. And uh, not forgetting, of course, the big one, uh, performing for the Pope <laughs> in uh, South America. Yeah, so in January 2019, I was uh, selected of 400 people worldwide to sing for Pope Francis. And I was the third ever Irish to sing for Pope Francis after Dana and Liam Lawton. So it was, it was a privilege and honour to be uh, firstly invited and secondly chosen. And thirdly, to go there. And it was, just, it was such an amazing experience and it changed my life forever. And just tell our audience... How many people did you sing to? A uh, quarter of a million people, yeah. At my concert, there was over three million at the week of concerts, but it was absolutely mad. It was crazy. Yeah. Another reason you won the award, of course, was you organised a big uh, concert for me or Roscommon Hospice. Yeah, so to put a bit of background to that, my auntie sadly passed away whilst I was in Panama at the age of 39 from cancer. Um, so I said to my mom, Mom, I'd love to do a concert in memory of Adele. So nine months later, we had a big concert in Swinford, and after a sellout show, we uh, gave our cheque for €10,000 to Mayor Roscommon Hospice, Hospice, which was just amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's a fantastic success story. <laughs> and listen, congratulations once again on your award and even more success with your singing career. Thank you so much.
I am Alan Heaney from Swinford County Mayo and I am one of ten of the Mayo Ultracyclists. On my left I have Colm Kearney from Bohola County Mayo, I have Jerry Booth from Armagh living in London and I have Pat Bilbo from Kalala. And over the course of the last four years we've done five ultracycles. The first one being a three day mizzen to Malin, the second one being a two day mizzen to Malin which is 600 kilometres over two days, a third one being a, a sub 24 hour mizzen to Malin in 23 hours and 20 minutes. Uh, the fourth one being the lands into John Ghost, which was from the southwest of England all the way up to the northeast of Scotland, 1600 kilometres in four days. And the last one was Lourdes Knock, which is 2000 kilometres from Lourdes up through France, across England and Wales, and across Ireland. Well, I joined these guys um, for the so 24 hour Mizzen to Bannon, and I suppose we trained for several hours for this event through the night, from daylight into darkness. Things were tough at times, but we rallied around each other and we got through it Perfect. in 23 hours and 20 minutes, and 20 minutes which was a major achievement. And I suppose we had seven cyclists, but the support team around us was absolutely amazing because we wouldn't have made it without the support. All right, it might be saying it's tough cycling, but the support guys did the hard work. Jerry, you came over from London uh, to be here tonight. I did indeed. Uh, well, we've probably made harder trips than this. I've been to most of the other cycles we've done so uh, this was an easy trip uh, Lourdes to Knock was another very very special trip uh, obviously with the, you have the two shrines to be involved with as well but getting there was the biggest problem you have a lot of stuff to deal with in France you have a lot of heat then you have a lot of rain then you have water to cross twice you have uh, all sorts of issues especially in roads that you don't want used to you have, you have to, things go wrong you run out of time uh, there was a lot of ups and downs on that trip, but there was more but ups. You got, you got through it anyway. We got through it. It was, a, it was a, a fantastic, a lot of memories. Uh, it was great to be a part of it, Lovely. and we had a great team. Great. And finally, Calm, you as well, you were... Yeah, I suppose similar to the guys. I suppose the lens into John O'Groats uh, cycle would be one that stood out for me. Cycling was 15, 16 hours a day, um, maybe three, four hours in bed, and um, it was tough overall. But I suppose what drove you on was that we had a lot of people following us. We had a lot of people contributing money um, to the charities that we were raising for, and I suppose that's what drove us on and kept us going. Councillor, you have a very special interest in being here in Dublin tonight. Absolutely, Henry. Yeah. I'm delighted that um, Swinford has been put on, map, on the map once again. Um, Cahill Gavin, who is a very worthy recipient of um, the Mayo Young Person of the Year. Um, he's been a fantastic advocate for um, Mayo Roscommon Hospice and obviously there's the Gavin family who have been um, uh, Adele Gavin, who died um, rec not that long ago, and he's made a special effort to commemorate her and obviously Mayo's Common Hospice, who are so, um, I suppose, a part of all of our lives um, in the West, in Mayo and Roscommon in particular. And uh, of course, you had a, a double celebration tonight here for Swinford. Absolutely, yeah. Um, uh, Alan Heaney, who I played fo football with with Swinford, and my own brother Gary, who's very involved with them as well. They're ultra cyclists. They're, I suppose, masochists in ways because um, the challenges that they've taken on are huge, and um, I mean, they they command massive respect. Uh, again, they've made, fundraised huge amounts of money, tens of thousands of euros, and I'm very proud of those as well. So it's been a fantastic day. Um, for Swinford, but in particular Mayo. And in fairness, this occasion every year is always an opportunity to celebrate the uh, wealth of talent that we have in Mayo. And, you know, Mayo people, the more than our football fans, are always interested in get, coming together and celebrating everything that's good about Mayo. And this is another occasion, another year, and somebody else, and Martina Jennings, of course, who her husband, Jarlath, um, who I played football with Mayo many years ago. So there's a, big, a lot of connections here tonight, and I'm delighted to be here and I'm celebrating with a lot of people I know, some new, some old.
Henry, we've just finished the awards uh, ceremony and the dinner and the presentations. I'd have to say it was one of the best uh, award ceremonies I've ever been at. I've been at a lot of them up here over the years and this was up there with the best. There was an atmosphere in the room. Uh, the three award winners were just spectacularly good. Uh, Carl Gavin, Martina uh, and the super cyclists. I know they're ultra cyclists but the super cyclists from Swinford. I mean they all embodied in different ways what Mayo is all about. There was a spirit in everything that they did, there was a generosity and there was real emotion in the performances and the contributions from all three prize winners and you could feel that through the room. It was just an amazing night. Peter, there's also, I know you're a great uh, advocate of connectivity and keeping connections with our diaspora and this is one of those occasions. Well, look, at one of the reasons that we do what we do uh, and it's not all about the commerce and it's not all about trying to get people to visit or invest. It is about connecting people who have a grow for the place because in the world that we're moving into in the 21st century, there is a technology to connect from anywhere you are back to a place that's special to you. And for the three and a half million people who have that kind of grow for Mayo, that's what Mayo Day is about, connecting the dots, making it possible for people to have a place that is home to some extent. There are people who are out of Mayo for two, three generations. Their home is going to be Alaska or Australia or wherever it might happen to be, but a bit of their home will always be Mayo. That's what the connections are about, and you can feel that in the room tonight. And there is a generosity that comes out of that connected camaraderie that is just very powerful, and it can solve and deal with a lot of the challenges that are out there in front of us. Not all, but some. Theresa Western Keir were the chosen partners for the Mayo Association Ball here in Dublin. Yes, Henry, we're absolutely delighted that uh, Western Care were chosen this year for 2020 for uh, the chosen charity for the Mayo Association in Dublin. We have a long legacy and a relationship with the Mayo Association. Um, over many years, they've been quite supportive to us um, from, in lots of different occasions. But to be honoured in this way as being the chosen charity this year, we're absolutely delighted. And what will this mean now for Western Care? Well, Henry, um, I know you're very aware yourself of what is Western Care, what we do, but um, we are challenged at the moment like lots of other disability sectors where we've received a 1% cut. So we, the money that will be raised tonight will help us to support many, many different projects which wouldn't simply happen because um, we wouldn't have actually the funding for it. So for a night like this, um, we're absolutely indebted. There'll be so many things that we can do as a result of the generosity of the people. And as you know, Henry, the people of Mayo and especially people up here in Dublin who have left their roots long ago, but they never forget where they came from and of course we are the Mayo Charity Western Care, we're deeply deeply rooted in all the communities so I know tonight looking around the room there's somebody, everybody can identify with somebody that we support in Western Care. We underestimate that we're a very very large employer, we actually employ over 900 people in the county so we would be in the top five employers in County Mayo so we do contribute and give back a lot as well to our community. This has been going on for God knows how long, I think from back to the 60s, and everybody looks forward to it every year. And then we have the added benefit of such fantastic winners every year, and we're proud to highlight their achievements for what they do for the people of the county and indeed the male people elsewhere. And uh, it's an organisation that seems to be growing and growing here in the capital. Well, we've been in, on the go, Henry, since 1905. And it's been a very strong association since. And there's a fantastic group of Mayo people in Dublin with a real yen for helping the people back home. It's a touch of kind of the emigrant, uh, you know, feeling that we should do something because we're not there. And every year the committee does Trojan work. And I'm chair, but I'm doing very little compared to what they're doing. I'm getting the credit for it. But in fairness, Henry, you know, it's the work that they do behind the scenes. And we're delighted to, to be able to highlight people like like you saw tonight for instance at the awards winner and you run a number of other initiatives throughout the year for the association here don't you that's right and and you know something as I said to you earlier there's a great uh, feeling of goodwill towards us because of that for example next month now the first Friday in March we're having a mentoring day that was initiated by my predecessor Julie Doyle and what that is about is introducing the young people of Mayo who are in Dublin be they students 
tends to be the workers in Dublin between sort of 18 and 25, with other people, industry, commerce, public service and so on, so that we can introduce them in ways that they don't get otherwise. And to try, as I said to you previously, to try and equalise the opportunities that they have with the people who are born and reared in Dublin. And so, still speaking of young people, the school debate is very important oh, for you. That, again, Julie Doyle started those up a couple of years ago. And you know something? It really blows your mind to see the talent that they are in the, in the second level students. We have finals in Mayo, and then the finalists from Mayo come through to Trinity in Dublin. And we have them in the debating hall in Trinity, which is the oldest debating society in the world. Pitt, Gladstone, and all those guys debate are there. And to get them even into that hall blows their mind. And then to see them in performing in front of former Supreme Court judges, former um, government ministers, former winners of the Irish Times debating society who are judging them. It really blows your mind. And that's every November we have the finals in, in Trinity. And we're so proud. We don't do very much, to be honest. The teachers and the parents and the relatives do a lot. But we're so proud to be able to just give them a showcase, essentially.